Hey y'all, it's time for another episode of New Makeup Releases. What am I calling it? Hot Takes. These are my hot takes on makeup that's new to the market. There is so much to talk about right now because holiday is happening. <laughs> despite the fact that it's only the beginning of October. Holiday releases, holiday sets, and all of that stuff is coming out. Subject verb disagreement. I got myself into that bind where a subject verb disagreement was inevitable, but you know what I'm saying. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Hannah. I love beautiful things, and it's so fun to pay attention to what's new to the makeup market. I am especially intrigued by what brands try to hawk during the holiday season, but I also know that this is one of the most dangerous times of year for people who are trying to avoid overspending on beauty. So I am assessing new releases as usual through the lens of my proclivity for quality over quantity when it comes to my belongings. If that sounds good to you and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Y'all, before we start, I have something to show you, and I know that I haven't given the definition of a hot take yet. I will do that, but this is more important. I just can't wait any longer. Okay, it's actually a riddle. If a refried bean and a bat had a baby, what would it look like? It would look like this. In a completely unexpected turn of events this week, we rescued this little bean from the streets and we are socializing her. She's feral, but she's young enough that she can still be socialized and adopted. She's coming along brilliantly. I have done this a handful of times and I've never seen a feral kitten come along as quickly as this one is. So I'm really excited for her. She's gonna be an amazing cat. Our little Halloween bean. She just came in time for Halloween. The jury is still out on whether she will become a permanent member of the household. There are conflicting opinions <laughs> among the seven of us. <laughs> That's me, Joe, Julia, Oliver, the baby, Cordy the dog, and Sadie, our cat. Among the seven of us, there are conflicting opinions about whether she should continue to live with us once she is fully socialized or whether someone else should adopt her. But in the meantime, it's a real joy to be helping her out. She also doesn't have a name. I've just been calling her Smidge, but if you have a better suggestion, let us know in the comments. It's just been a couple of days and I haven't been getting very much sleep. A really tiny kitten, especially one that's just getting used to it, is, uh, you know, in a way, kind of like a, a less intense version of an actual baby. It's like you can't quite sleep through the night. So if I look tired, it's because I am tired. I'm sure some eye makeup would have helped, but I was like too tired <laughs> to put it on. I'm hoping you'll be sufficiently impressed by me matching my lipstick to my sweater and you won't even notice. In journalism, a hot take is a piece of deliberately provocative commentary that is based almost entirely on shallow moralizing. In response to a news story, in this case a beauty news story, usually written on tight deadlines with little research or reporting and even less thought. So I'm going to be doing some shallow moralizing. I've given a little bit of thought to these. I just went through trend mood and I pulled up everything that I felt like I had something to say about preposition. Smidge has just settled in my lap. She was in a little, little cozy cat carrier bed thing to my right before I started filming. And now since I, since I held her up to show her to the world, she's like, I'm gonna hang out with you. She's giving herself a little bath. She's so good. She's so little. I think she's about six weeks old, but she's already like grooming herself completely. And we love to see it. You're doing great, Smidge. You got it. You got it. She's pretty good at grooming herself. She's a little patchy, a little, bit, a little bit of a patchy job, but we all start somewhere. I'll hold her up some more times during the video, but I, I don't want to disturb her right now. Now she's assiduously licking her paw, getting in between the little toe beans. Oh, I'm a mess. Okay, let's talk about makeup. Glossier, so first things first. Everything's out of order, actually. It's not first things first, middle things middle, or last things last. I was pulling th pulling windows up from trend mood and I was trying to go in chronological, reverse chronological order and everything got mixed together. So the first thing that's coming up for me is the announcement of the Glossier monochromatic palettes. So Glossier came out with these little three pan palettes, and I like the concept. So what I was gonna say first things first about these is that I actually used some of my store credit at Glossier to purchase like four of them or something so that I could compare the different browns. And I think I also got the green one out of curiosity and they shipped and then it's been 
processing for a really long time. Usually when I make a purchase from Glossier, it's here in like a day because I think they have a distribution center in Los Angeles or at least in California. That's the only explanation because it's like, it feels like they're overnighting it every time when they're not. So I think that this must be stuck in the mail because it shipped like the day that they released and it's been over a week and it's been just processing since then. It's either stuck in the mail or entirely lost in the mail, in which case, if I ever do manage to track these down, I might have to reorder, and then it'll be way, way late, my review. So I'm not even sure I'll follow through with it. We'll just have to see. I'll probably at some point order one or another, but I might not do like the full review where it's like a dedicated review. If they come really late or if I have to reorder, I might just integrate the review into some other content. But I am going to review this at some point. I mean, I have to. It's like Glossier releasing powder eyeshadows. And I do review Glossier things when they're of interest. The makeup, I don't review all of the skincare because I find that it's, I find Glossier very hit or miss and I don't want to miss on my face with skincare. <laughs> I feel like that concept as a sentence was kind of a reach, but let's move on from it. I like, this is what I was gonna say. I like this idea. I've seen people complaining about the fact that the compact looks like it should hold four and that it only holds three. For some reason, it doesn't bother me that much. I I understand what they're doing. I mean, I, I think they didn't want to make like a, a round one. Like think about what it was like if you're in the boardroom. You just want to release trios, a matte, a metallic, and a satin. I mean, if I were doing it, there would also be a fourth one, which would be a super wet look, sheer, shiny, like glitter topper, like a, one with a bunch of micas in it. I think that that would have been incredible, but Glossier, you know, wasn't going to do that. I totally understand why they picked three. I don't think that they should have gone to four. It totally makes sense, the concept to me, that you can do like a multi-finish eye look, but with generally the same color, or you can just pick the finish that you like the best and put all over your lids. And the idea, the way they're marketing it is that you kind of like find your perfect one color for eyeshadow, and then you just get that one, but you have it in three finishes. And there are a lot of things that I like about that. It fits with the Glossier brand because I feel like the Glossier person, like the person that they feature in all of their advertising, doesn't wear very much eye makeup, maybe liner some of the times, but it's really like a very skin and brows and glossy and lips kind of look. So they're saying, okay, you're the Glossier person, you don't wear very much color cosmetics, but when you do, you just have the one color that you always default to. So it's like, if you don't wear very much, then when you do, you're always going for an olive green or you're always going for like a rosy taupe or something. So you just choose the color that you're always going for and you just buy the one. I feel, I like it because I feel like it integrates well with the concept of the brand. It's not out of left field. It, it's Glossier pushing themselves a little bit. It feels aligned with the brand's messaging and aesthetics, and it feels aligned with everything else that they sell. Love to see it. But the other thing that I really like about it is that they're actually going so far as to say, like, choose your shade, figure out your color. Let us help you figure out which one is right for you. They're subtly telegraphing, and in some cases not so subtly telegraphing in their advertising, that they've designed this product to have like this array of colors from which you can choose your one and then you only need one. And I love a you only need one situation. Most brands are like, gotta catch them all, you know? So there are, are several things I appreciate about this release. Of course, none of that, none of that speaks at all to how it performs. I don't know anything about how it performs. I haven't even watched any reviews of it yet. It could be terrible and it could also be truly awesome because I find that on sort of a daily basis, especially like a no filming day, although I mean here I am with no eyeshadow, but you know what I'm saying, especially just like a regular old day if I wanna wear eyeshadow, a lot of times I do reach for this kind of thing like a, a, a color that I really like, maybe in two different finishes. So I could see myself, even as a makeup lover, even, even as someone with a lot of eyeshadow, getting use out of one of these, but it's going to depend entirely on the formula. All right, we're getting into the first of the holiday packs, bundles, thingies that I'm talking about today. This one's from Tower 28, and I want to touch on it because it's beautiful. I really like the colors. They're coming out with this, like, clear, really pretty clear, and then this shade chestnut. Oh, I guess chill 
is that is that the clear they've always had? That might just be in the bundle. That might not be new. But chestnut, the sort of what they're calling a burnt caramel, it's like a little bit of a reddish brown, orangey. I really like that color, especially for a gloss like this. And they don't, I mean, I guess they came out with some more neutral ones recently, but for a long time, they didn't have any of these like nice, warm, nudie colors in this gloss. So it's nice to see that. It's very attractive, very beautiful. But I'm also bringing it up because I wanted to reference on camera my experience with these glosses because I recently did a lip gloss declutter and I showed that weird things were happening to both of them. I bought them, I think, in February or March, six months, six or, six or seven months ago. And one of them, the color oat, which was like a very, very pale, milky peach, it had turned very orange, like the color changed completely and it was sort of separating. And the other one, Magic, which is a clear one with glitter, the doe foot had started to turn green. In that overhead footage video, I was like, huh, this is a little bit funny. But then I said that I was keeping the glosses. Afterwards, I took another look at them. I looked at what oat was supposed to look like and I realized that it had changed dramatically in color and I decided to declutter both of them. So first I wanted to just assure you, if you saw that video, that I didn't actually keep those glosses. I decided to declutter them. They're past their prime. Then in the comments, I discovered that they actually are labeled as only being good for six months. They have a very, very short shelf life and they're honest about that. The reason they have a short shelf life, I believe, is that it's a clean beauty brand and they just don't use as many preservatives or as powerful of preservatives as a lot of other brands. So this is just something to know about Tower 28 that I think they are transparent about the brand. They're not trying to hide it, but I don't feel like it's talked about enough on YouTube given that it's a pretty radical difference between this lip gloss and almost all of the other lip glosses around the market. They say that it's only good for six months and it truly is only good for six months. So if you buy it, you're choosing to buy something that doesn't have a lot of the preservatives in it that other glosses have. And that might be something that is really great for you that you really care about, but you're also choosing to take on the repercussions of that. And the repercussions are that it is truly a perishable good. You buy it and you're planning just to use it for five or six months of your life. You're not you're not collecting it as like a collector's item, like a doll or a, a I don't know, a pack of cards or something like that. You are, it's almost like you're buying, I'm sitting here trying to think of a food item that lasts six months, like a jar of better than bouillon paste. Why is that the only thing that I can think of? Maybe like an extra large bottle of soy sauce or something that you can stretch it for six months. I don't know. <laughs> it's you're, you're buying something that you're just planning to use up within the matter of months. And I think a lot of makeup is that way to a lot of people. But for us in the beauty community, it doesn't tend to be like that. We tend to buy way more than, way more than allows us to use any one of it up in that short length of time. And that's how I was with those glosses. I did make progress on them. The one called Magic, I had used almost all of it up. But if I had been aware that the shelf life was really that short and that they were truly serious and that they were going to turn pretty much when we got to the five or six month mark, I would have used them harder and I would have used them up or tried to before their day came due. So I don't have a quarrel with the brand. I think that it's a choice that they've made and it's perfectly fine. I just wanted to put that out there as a PSA about this product. Some of you ask why Sadie lets us hold her on her back like like this, like a little baby. It's because we started doing it when she was a kitten. I was trying to give you some ASMR purring, but as soon as we got up there, she stopped. If she starts purring again, I'll hold her up to the mic. Let's talk about Natasha Denona's mini palette releases for the holidays. So what I thought was the mini gold, and I talked about it for like a half an hour in my other video, it turned out to be the mini Metropolis. and. I think at that time, some of you even already knew, like maybe if you looked really close at the picture, you could see that it said Metropolis on the palette, but I went on and on about what the repercussions would have been if this had been a mini gold palette, which it totally looks like. I mean, it 100% looks like a mini gold. So I, I wonder if she was even, I don't know, joking us. 
trying to like get us all excited, get us thinking that there was gonna be another gold palette coming. But so far we haven't, I, as far as I know, heard anything official about something like that, like a, a gold palette repackaged or a, a slightly different version of the gold palette. So obviously we're keeping our ears to the ground about that. I mean, if you want a mini gold palette, then just get this, like it's exactly the same color story in all of these ways. There are so many things that one does with the gold palette that one could do with this little mini metropolis. Maybe it will scratch that itch for some people. What I find much more intriguing is this little mini three pan Natasha Denona palette. Smidge is exploring my desk. Hey, come back. It's a mini baby glam. So it's three shades from the glam palette and one of them, the metallic one is the color from the glam palette that I like. It's the one that I would want. And I don't know, I'm very tempted by this. It's only $19. It's not the kind of thing that I would make a trip to Sephora for or even place an order from Sephora for, but it's the kind of thing that I could see myself buying if I were in store. I think because I like the formula, the Natasha Denona formula so much, and the price is so good. I mean, it's $20, but it's three single eyeshadows for $20. Even some of the really good indie brands whose eyeshadows I love, like that's how much they cost. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I feel like that's a very smart thing that Natasha Denona has done. It's a very compelling offering and I kind of want it. I don't have active plans to buy it. And I'm not saying over here, the next time I place an order from Sephora, I'm totally throwing that in my cart. Can't wait to get it. It's not like that. I actually, I maybe am brave enough to go so far as to say that my guess is that the outcome of this will be that I don't ever get this because deciding not to pick up a little thing here and a little thing there, that's one of the ways that I make sure that I don't overspend on beauty. And it's also one of the ways that I keep my collection manageable in size. And I know that I can do what I would do with these shades with other things in my collection. So at the end of the day, even though it's so cute and it's only $20, I could see myself deciding against it. But I could also see a future in which I actually just end up getting it to review or just to talk about because it, it just, if I'm in the right place and it's in the right place at the right time, I might go for it because I think it's brilliantly organized and and chosen. Like everything is really spot on for Natasha for holiday. Smidge, what, are you making trouble? I thought you were gonna take a nap. She wants to explore, but she's too tiny. Anyway, well done, Natasha. Well done, everyone in the boardroom. Round of applause. I just think they nailed it with baby glam. Maybe instead of smidge, she wants to be called baby glam. Are we doing new makeup releases hot takes or are we just snuggling a kitten? It's kind of hard to tell. This is how all of my work has gone over the past two days. I've been very distracted and I've had so much to do. This is just, it's really, uh, it's really been a lot. You've really, you've been a lot, baby glam. You wanna go back to your place? It'd probably be best for both of us. I also want to assure you that we are giving Sadie plenty of love. We are lavishing her with love. She's just not here at the moment. She is, <laughs> she's staying away in protest. She's social distancing from smidge, but she's been getting a lot of extra love and a lot of extra treats, so don't worry. She'll come around. Color pop, mega, Jewel, play it jewel. I'm not one of those people who can't stand a pun, but at this point, I feel like ColourPop is really trying it. I feel like they might need a new idea. I'm not as attracted to this as I was to the last mega palette. The last mega palette they released, which I now can't even remember what it was called or even what it looked like. Even though I was so attracted to it that I did a whole video duping the vibes. I like had to talk myself out of it in multiple stages, talk myself down off the ledge. Even though that is true, I now can't remember what it looks like and I can't remember what it was called. But I do remember that that one really attracted me, drew me in, made me want it, made me think about it. And this one is just so kind of sl only slightly muted rainbow. It's so basic to me in its color story that even though Many of the individual shadows are very beautiful and some of the colors are even more nuanced than they look at first glance. Even though that is true, 
I don't want it. I'm not compelled by it the way I was by the other one. But I put it in here because at the end of the day, I have to say about it what I had to say about that other one, which is that if I didn't already have a robust collection of single eyeshadows, I might buy this. Even though I'm not attracted to the color story, I might buy it just to depot it because I believe that these palettes still they're magnetic. I think they still are making them so that the pans are magnetic and they're easily removable. You don't have to depot it. You just pop the pans out with a tool. It's like they're made to pop in and out. So I would just buy it, take all the pans out, and just use them to seed a really great collection of single shadows because I like ColourPop singles. I really like the way that they perform. What I've learned over the years, I used to just be like, ColourPop's my favorite formula. I love the mattes, I love the shimmers, I love the eyeshadows, blah, 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 blah. Nothing beats them even though they're so cheap, pee, pee, pee. I used to say that, and now the way I feel is that they don't last as long as others. Like, I have some Natasha Denona shades, mattes, that have outlasted some ColourPop shades by like two or three times. Like, the Natasha Denona shades have lasted two or three times longer than a ColourPop shade. The mattes tend to just go off more quickly than mattes from more high-end brands, in my experience. It might kind of be on a shadow-by-shadow -shadow basis because it might have more to do with the specific pigments than it does to do with just their overall formula. But I'm starting to see them even down to what I used to like the most about the brand, which is the single eyeshadows. I'm starting to really see them as what they are, which is a fast fashion makeup brand. I mean, it's not even, I'm not even besmirching them. That's what they're trying to be. They literally have professed to be trying to be doing that. And so there's a time and place for that for some people. And I feel like when starting a collection and you don't really know what you like, you don't really know what colors you're gonna end up using, and you don't wanna put a lot of money into a single eyeshadow collection and then have you know made the wrong decision about what color stories to pick, or what direction to go in in terms of finish or whatever. If you're just trying to get to know yourself, this is a good way to do it. Just one purchase for $35 and then kind of like go from there and then later on refine and you know, go into more quality over quantity if that's what you want. But to me, that's kind of the only place for this in my mind and my life right now. So I myself definitely don't want to buy it. Fenty is back with a glossy posse, blue ribbon, gold star, A plus top award for naming your holiday bundle. I just think it's so amazing. I said it last year and I'll say it again this year. And actually, I think I like the colors even more this year than I did last year. I really like this. The very They have the very pale shimmery one, which is so pretty. Candy milk. Oh no, candy milk is the cream. The gloss balm cream. So that's like just sort of a mauve. That's the one I like the least. The other three I really, really love. So Fenty Glow Fantasy, Hot Chocolate Fantasy, and Champ Stamp Fantasy. I really love this kind of coral. I kind of want this. <laughs> this is this is like on the list of things along with that Natasha Denona trio that I am going to try to resist buying. I don't have active plans to buy, but that if I happen to be in the right place at the right time, it might just sneak into my cart because I would give away at least one of them. Like I'd give away the cream one. I'd give away maybe one or two of the others, but I just, I just like that the looks of that really pale sheeny one. And I really like the looks of all three of the sparkly ones, actually. It's only the cream one that I don't like. And it's called Glossy Posse. It's so cute. Maybe I'm just feeling, maybe I just feel because I'm sort of loopy and I haven't been sleeping well and I'm all up in my kitten business. Maybe I'm just feeling spendy today. You know how sometimes you go through a phase where you're like, yeah, I could get that. I could get that. I go through those and then I usually just, you know, talk myself out of it. And I go back to my baseline, which is Probably not. So I think that's why I'm sort of talking at cross purposes to myself because the mood that I'm in right now is like, why not? Let's get the glossy posse. Let's get the Natasha Denona baby glam. Let's name our kitten baby glam. But even when I'm in that mood, even from that mood, I'm saying to you, I know myself and I know what's probably going to happen or rather what's probably not going to happen. I'm probably not going to by the Glossy Posse. I'm probably gonna pass on the Glossy Posse again this year, but it is so well curated and so well named and I just love to see it. I love to see it done well, even when it makes me wanna buy it, even when I know that I'm not actually gonna buy it. Here comes Fenty again with other, they're doing well on the holiday sets this year, I feel. What really caught my eye in this slide is the matching lip cream and cheek blush. 
Che what are they called? Freestyle cream blush, which I reviewed those cream blushes. I do really like them. I ended up giving them away simply because I felt like their colors were redundant in my collection and I was just trying to, they were a self-sponsored review. It wasn't something I bought for myself with my own money. And when the reckoning came, I was like, I really like these, but I'm sure someone else would also really like them. And I have a lot of great cream blushes and that was just like the basis of my decision. So I gave them away, but I know that they're good. I know the formula is really good. And I like the sort of bright, milky, peachy color. And I like the fact that it's the matching gloss. I just think it looks good, okay? It's cute. And then the one below it is full of things that I don't need or want. I don't really, I don't need a primer. I don't usually go for primers that aren't luminous and this is just the regular pro filter primer. And I don't want this gold highlighter and I don't use eyeliner pens like this. So the bottom one is just a total miss for me based on what I use and what I like in makeup. But the top one is very cute. I just, I feel like Fenty knows how to do it. But actually it pulled up the next slide and it looks like Patrick Ta also knows how to do it. I just, I think the thing that is intriguing me this week is that usually these holiday bundles just make me yawn and roll my eyes. And there are a couple this week that are nailing it. They're very attractive to me. And again, I'm not going to buy this Patrick Ta thing. I do have one of these, one of the full-size compacts I have. She's so LA, which looks exactly like the color all the way on the right, but they're calling it something else. They're calling it She's Baked. I feel like it looks just like She's So LA, but it's they're saying that it's a different one. And maybe that's just so that people who already own She's So LA will still buy this trio, but maybe the color has been slightly altered and it's not exactly the same. It looks close enough. And if, even if I wanted this, that would maybe be a reason not to buy it because I feel like I would pretty much be duping something already in my collection. I'm struggling with my bangs today because they're, they've grown too long, but what's really happening is my hair is really dirty. So they're not, it's starting to weigh itself down. They're not like, hold, they're not curled the way that they are often for like the first week after I wash them. So we're on the struggle bus, Smidge. Smidge and I are both on the struggle bus. I, because of my dirty hair, she, because she's only tiny, just got born, doesn't even know what's what, and it's hard to be her. I'm a complete fool for kittens. I don't know if you can tell, I have, I have like an actual problem. I feel like there's a world in which this is like a diagnosable clinical problem. I have a full size of one of these and I bought it with my own money. I really wanted it. I agonized over it. I bought it. It was a whole thing. So it was something that I put energy and money into acquiring. <laughs> And I don't know, it's not that frequent that I do a thing like that these days. So it's a whole thing in my collection, this blush that I bought myself. And I definitely, definitely don't use it as much as I thought I would. And it's because the cream is very balmy. It's kind of sheer and very balmy and it stays kind of tacky. It really is just, it feels kind of like a lip balm to me or some sort of hand salve in terms of its consistency. The powder is pretty, it's pretty pretty but I don't wear powder blushes very often. I really got it for the cream and it's just this balm. It's like this shiny, glossy balm. So it turned out that I didn't like the formula. I'm just having to admit it to myself. I actually think I included that in a video about makeup I regret buying. So that's why I wouldn't buy this. But if I really loved the formula, I might be powerfully attracted by this because I love the chocolatey kind of berry brown. I love that center shade, that very bright and intense coral. That's the exact color that it looks in the pan like it's gonna be super bright and garish on me, but then it really ends up looking like I got sun. So both of those are, those are like my two favorite blush colors basically. And then the very cool toned Barbie pink is a color that I never wear and I don't own any blushes like that. So if I had a reason to buy this, if I liked the formula a lot and I had that reason to buy it, it would be cool because it would be introducing this color into my collection that I literally don't have a single thing like it. And that is kind of valuable. I feel like the balance is right to me. I'd be getting two that I knew I could rely on and one kind of wild card. And I just would enjoy that as a purchase for myself if I liked the formula, but I don't, so I'm not gonna buy it moving on. ColourPop X Sprots, no interest. Oh, this is kind of interesting to me. Well, I'm interesting to myself, re this. Like I saw this and I had a thought. And I think the thought's interesting. I don't know how interesting the product is. The Norvina Chrome Sticks. So Norvina is 
uh, apparently a separate brand within the ABH umbrella and it was like this whole thing they rolled it out in a very clunky way as far as I remember they were like it's not Anastasia Beverly Hills it's Norvina and it has its own gondola at Sephora and then they came out with these giant palettes and I feel like Norvina has tried to brand in a different way from ABH. Like they've tried to have their own show that they're offering something different. I feel like it was semi-successful in that those giant colorful palettes sort of seemed like a departure, a slight departure for ABH, but I just feel like they never quite fully successfully made the distinction because I wouldn't have been surprised if ABH had started coming out with those Norvina palettes and called them ABH. It just would have been an extension of what they were already doing. A little more colorful. I, I've just always kind of been, a, been like, where's the drama, kind of? Weirdly, when I saw this, these chrome sticks, and I saw the way that they're packaged, and this very sort of graphic font, graphic modern font, and these colorful sort of shiny tubes, and I don't know, the way that they're shaped, and then the color selection, which is very complete. I mean, well, I, well, it's not complete. There are a lot of grungy colors that they're missing, but it's very rainbow, very, very bright primary rainbow. And it reminds me of other brands. So it reminds me of Urban Decay. It reminds me of Makeup Forever, actually. It, it reminds me of ColourPop. You know what I mean? It reminds me of things that other brands would do. And it doesn't remind me of something that ABH would do. So when I saw this, it's almost like the other shoe dropped for me about what Norvina is, like what Norvina's trying to be. And I don't know how successfully they have been doing that until now. Like, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Did, did this align for you? I guess they did do that like weird glitter thing. I just feel like this is kind of a solid release for Norvina. And it makes sense that it's Norvina as opposed to ABH. It kind of like teaches me what the brand is a little bit. And I'm not in the market for this kind of thing, but if I were, and if I were interested in this brand, I would find this very compelling and I would wanna buy some of them. So I think, again, it's like, I like to see it. I like to see a brand doing it well, doing a thing well, <laughs> even if I don't want the thing, even if there's nothing about the thing itself that makes me want it, I just like to see things done well. When, when it's branding and color and texture and messaging and concept and, and you know, formula and makeup and advertising and the way that things are photographed. I just like it when things are done well. I think it's important for me to make a distinction between celebrating a thing that's done well and wanting to buy and own a thing. So it helps me to be like, I like seeing it done well because it helps me to make that distinction. Viseart, I, when I saw this, I was like, where has Viseart been? What's Viseart been doing? I just feel like we haven't heard from Viseart in like a year. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't had a new release from Viseart like in a, in a decade. And this, I like the concept. It's like a 1920s, roaring 20s, is that right? The more colorful one of these two palettes is inspired by another 12 pan that Viseart used to carry that's now been discontinued. I think that the other one was like an all metallics. It was like the same colors, but all metallics and a little bit less saturated. They retired it and replaced it with one that's a mix of shimmer and matte. And that makes total sense to me. I feel like it's going to do much better on the market. I personally would rather own this palette, even though I love metallics a lot. So I get why they did that. And it looks like they also brightened up the colors, like the blues and stuff. It's pretty, but I have the same objection to it that I had to the jewel-toned ColourPop one. It's just the rainbow color story is, once it once the rainbow is totally complete and that's almost all you're doing, it just becomes a, a little bit less, or a lot less interesting to me actually, because it's not really saying something. It's like there's not a point of view there. And so it doesn't have that, it doesn't have those teeth you know what I mean? It doesn't have that edge that usually draws me in when an eyeshadow palette's making me want it. And the other one, it's pretty, but it's just so pale. I'm also very pale, so you would think that I, of all people, would be like, oh yeah, I could make this work. But I actually don't know if I could because I have hooded eyes and I need some dynamic range in shades in order to create structure in my eyes. So maybe I'd be able to use that sort of smoky, dark, brownish gray in the bottom right-hand corner, but that's the only option for that. And all the rest are like basically the same level of saturation. So I'm not interested in either of these palettes, but I like, I don't know, I like the sort of night, it seems like they have kind of a 1920s inspo. Art Deco, a little bit, at least one of them is a little bit Art Deco inspired. Viseart is a brand that I used to be really interested 
in and I used to really want to own their palettes and I never bought them because they were too expensive. And I always thought that one day I would finally come around and like buy a Viseart palette. But what happened was the brand kind of moved further and a little bit incrementally further and further away from being at like in the spotlight of my interest. And now I'm not that interested anymore in it. Has that happened to everyone? I can't tell when things like this happen to me. I can't tell if it's like they're losing their purchase on the market and I and my feelings are like a reflection of that or if it's just something that's happening to me but everyone else is out there like consuming Viseart palettes voraciously. Tell me. Oh, this is the last thing that I have to say. I had to revisit this Gucci palette. The last time I talked about it and it gripped my soul, it was already out of stock on Saks website. It had launched exclusively on the Saks website and then it was gone before I even knew about it. And I couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't on the Gucci website. There was no listing on the Saks website. It had literally completely disappeared. There was just a blog or two on the internet and I think one announcement on Trend Mood. And I was like, was this incredibly limited release? And everybody missed it except for those bloggers. I just didn't know what to think. I didn't know what was going on. And I had kind of resigned myself to it not even being an option. But it's back in stock at Sephora. And it's going on my wish list. It's going on my Christmas wish list. And that's all that I'll say about that. I would love to do a self-sponsored review of it, but it's I guess it's not all I'll say about that. <laughs> I'm going to say something else now. I would love to do a self-sponsored review of this, but I just reviewed three products from Violet Gray for this month. Like I, I bought three luxury makeup products with, with my budget for self-sponsored review. And I don't want to like eat up the entire thing and like eat into next month because I don't know what else might come out that feels like maybe a little bit more urgent than this because this is like a $150 eyeshadow palette. So I just, I, I mean, I know some of you want to see me review it, but the question is like how many of you are going to be seriously helped by a review of it? Maybe people would be because it would be like that vicarious thing. If you've been wanting it and you know that you're not going to buy it because it's too expensive or because it wouldn't actually be all it's cracked up to be for you, but you still have those feelings. Maybe it would help to see someone else sort of like show that in real life it's just makeup. I don't know. If there's like a true cri de cour from the comments, cur, cri de cur, cri de cur about this palette, then maybe I will just decimate my budget for self-sponsored review by getting it to review. Right now, my plan is to just have it on my Christmas wish list. And as the baby says, the baby that I live with, see what happens? See what happens? Wanna see what happens? I'm done, I have to go. What's coming out of my mouth is makeup, makeup, makeup. But what's happening in my brain is kitten, 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 kitten fluff, kitten fur, kitten whiskers. So uh, I don't even know how I actually got through this video. And you know what we have to do now. We have to say, we have to say bye to little, little sleeping baby glam bat over here. There she is. She has the makings of the perfect cat, especially if you happen to be, I don't know, a witch. Because she has the coloring, she's very glossy, and she's also kind of magic. It's time for me to go. You thought this video was about makeup. It was actually about little smidge. Is that all? I think that that is all. I feel like I didn't cover that much, but it's interesting. There are a lot of things that have been announced and the ones that I had an interest in, I had an intense interest and in. I felt they were quite juicy and wanted to talk about them. And then there are a whole bunch of other ones in which I had no interest. So I've done it. I've made my way through everything that I wanted to talk about. And I hope that you enjoyed watching these hot takes. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 